Hello and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today we're going to be talking about CDs. Now, no, not the CD32. I've already covered this and I'll probably cover it again. It's always good to do a good refresh on such a classic console gaming system from Commodore. But this was their second adventure into this land, as most of you probably know. And those that don't know, maybe you'll learn a little something. But way back when in 1991, Commodore unleashed this onto the world. The Commodore CD-TV. And yes, what an elegant design. 1990s CD player, just can't get that wrong. This computer will rule the world. And yeah, so we've got this amazing design, this retro throwback. I mean, today you call it a retro throwback, but of the era, I mean, this came out in 1991, guys. And it just, to me, when I first saw it, I was like, well, I mean, it's a cool looking CD player. It's got the, like the vacuum fluorescent display going on. It's black. It looks like it's, it belongs right up there on my media cabinet. It's got the nice wide feet on it. Big, heavy feet. It weighs a ton. You know, if you look at the back here, you can see it's got the, a nice complement of jack packs plus some expansion slots. And then it comes with this really curious remote. Now here's the neat thing about this unit. As you know on my channel, I was fortunate enough to come across a lot of these uh, Amiga components before the big price hikes and whatnot. And you know, the CDTV is one of the last Amigas I didn't really have, or I should say last Commodore products that I didn't have, but I was finally able to find one for a really good deal. But then we're hoping it works, right? I mean, yeah, it's powered on, you can see that, but one of the Achilles heels of these things is if this drive does not work, this DV, the CD drive, I almost said DVD, how about that? This CD drive doesn't work, you're screwed. Like there's no replacement parts for it. You basically have to tear apart an A570 and an Amiga 500 to fix this. And why an Amiga 500? Because yes, that's what this is. This is basically a CD player with an Amiga 500 in it. You know, a multimedia computer type device, right? That was what Commodore was trying to do with this. And that's why it comes with this really curious looking remote because you've got a D-pad down here, very familiar to Nintendo controllers. And then what could be arguable, you, know, you could argue that, yeah, this is like a standard CD remote, but there's some extra things in there, very uh, reminiscent. You know, we got the, again, the Nintendo style AB buttons. And then this little curious thing here, mouse joy, to switch between what this actually and how it would control the device, right? So it's a joystick, so A and B, D-pad over there, or now it's gonna act like a mouse. And it uses infrared, and it fires off right here. There's even a little window that says, make sure you aim the remote at that. I've heard rumors that this has a very narrow infrared window, so we're gonna, we'll check that out. Now, let's turn it on, and let's hope it works, right? Because I have no idea. So uh, we've got it plugged into my trusty Samsung Goodwill TV that I picked up for $17. You saw it before in my PAR video. So let's go ahead and fire those up. First, we'll turn the monitor on. Okay, she's blinking. Turn the CD TV on. We're getting all kinds of flashy lights. That's good. It's looking for a disc. That's good. Check signal cable. Well, we need to give this the right source. And there we go. Well, that part works at least. How about that? It was always such an amazing looking image. Like when we first saw this in the stores, seeing this uh, like granite rock texture in the CD, of course, this looks so beautiful. You're like, oh, the Amiga, look at all the colors the Amiga can do. That's so great. And if you look really close without breaking up too much with Moray, you can even see the uh, composite video interlace flicker there. Look, if you look really, really close right there, I don't know if the iPhone is gonna correct that or not, but you might see the interlace flicker because this is a high-res screen, high-res interlaced screen, huh? So the true test, how do you get a disc in it? Well, it uses caddies. Now it originally came with black caddies, but those are worth more than, well, my divorce settlement really. So you've got to go and just get these. You get these, these are cheap, plentiful. Yeah, you could spray paint it and off you go. So what I've done is using one of my original yeah, 45 record album type CDs, I burned one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have burned CDs lately. I haven't done it in decades, honestly. And I was really shocked. So I had a USB burner that I used in Windows 11 and plugged it in and Windows was like, yeah, cool, neat. DVD drive that can burn CDs. And then when I popped in the blank CD to write it, 
it said you want to launch the program, and it launched Windows Media Player Classic. Actually, I think it had a worse name than that. I think it was like Windows Legacy Player Classic or something. It made me feel ridiculously old. But it worked. I was able to just burn some copyright-free music here. I'll put the uh, the music you're about to hear, or if you can hear it, it'll be in the description below. It's uh, you know, just music that you can use without getting uh, whacked by the uh, YouTube robots. So let's see if this works. This will be a good sign if this drive is actually functional. So there's like a little arrow indicator on it, which way it goes in. It looks a little spooky at first if you've never used this type of system. Just kind of give it a shove. And you get an access light. And if it's gonna work, it's gonna come up and start with the CD interface. Oh, look at that. See, oh, there you go. Playing track one, I think. Well, no, it doesn't say playing track one, does it? Oh. Okay, so now you can use the front control. So we'll hit play and it beeps and then the laser starts making noises. And you guys hear that? This is, I've been told this is copyright free music so I can let it play. Oh yeah. Jamming out. So we are in mouse mode. So let's go to, well, you know, let's keep it in mouse mode and just click. What do you think? Yep, that went to the next track, track two. So yeah, by the way, this works, this works. Now it does say volume, right, right here. Let's do that. Okay, you can see the little LEDs, LEDs, the little vacuum fluorescent display updating. Now the phone is recording this and doing all this weird flickering you might be seeing on the video of this display is from the uh, the recording, the phone recording it and capturing it out of you know sync with the display. So yeah, she's she's working. The remote is working. In fact, how far away can I be? Does this like across the room? Let's go across the room here. Across the room. Oh yeah, no problem there. It was even kind of off to the side there. Well, that's pretty cool. So yeah, obviously with the beige caddy, it doesn't look as cool, right? But hey, it works, awesome, especially for the price. If you took this home, this was kind of maybe be the first thing you did, like use it as a CD player. And sadly, a lot of folks, it was probably used as a very expensive CD player in the end because, well, it is an Amiga 500 with a CD drive and that's really all it is. It's, it's kind of a, a base Amiga 500. And while there are things you can do, like plugging in a keyboard and a mouse to turn it into an Amiga 500 computer, um, well, it's a little involved and not everyone wanted to do that or spend the money on that. This did come with, you could get it when you purchased it, it came with a, a kit where you could get a, a keyboard. Okay, so this is editor Q here and I'm gonna step in because uh, Q doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. It did not come with that kit. It was something you could buy after the fact. Okay, a keyboard and a mouse and an external floppy drive and they all matched in color. It was like a black setup and you just had like an Amiga 500 with a CD-ROM drive that you could plug into your, into your uh, stereo setup, which was kind of neat. Really the intent of this though, other than using it like an Amiga 500 with a CD drive, which you could do with the Amiga 500 and an A570, which I've shown in other videos. If you search my channel, you'll find that video where I've done that. You know, that, that A570 came out shortly after this, which kind of made it like, well, if I already have an Amiga, I can just buy the 570 and do everything this offers. Well, yes, but remember this, this was targeting a completely different market than Commodore Amiga users. They, they were trying to go after, again, this is me saying this. This is my interpretation of this, not, I'm not stating this as fact, right? I'm not, I didn't look up wiki marketing facts about Commodore and the CDTV. I'm just saying, as somebody who worked in an Amiga dealership and we're selling these things, this was targeted towards people that maybe computers weren't their first thing. They were interested in this new multimedia stuff, the CDIs and the, you know, CDs plus G graphics and all this kind of stuff that was coming out. You know, CDs were this great new crazy thing for multimedia. And I think that's what Commodore obviously was targeting here was plop it down, throw it in the living room, and try and enter another market, right, with their system. And yeah, for people in the know, quote unquote, could turn it into a full-fledged Amiga 500 setup, right? So that was maybe the thinking. So let's go ahead and put in a disc that's supposed to be 
the multimedia interactive experience that Commodore was trying to pitch with this, okay? Okay, so it's a very fluid process. When you eject the disc, it basically does this neat little animation, and then we get back to this, and then you go ahead and pop in a, you know, a, a multimedia disc, and let's see what happens. And I'm gonna leave this in mouse mode for now. So there you get the CDTV interactive logo. So this is letting you know, yes, you're entering that world of amazing Commodore interactive multimedia. And it's gonna be loading it at the 1X CD speed that it is, and an Amiga 500. Oh, this is a game. Ah, wait a minute. <laughs> Ta da Yeah, copyrighted music. Let's turn that down. Okay, so we can't keep that music on, unfortunately. But look at this, Lucas Fun Circus. Well, maybe we should switch this to Joy Mode. Okay, so pressing the A button. I don't know. That's, that's, that's impressive, isn't it? Nope, all right, so I'm gonna go back to mouse in case it's thinking that this is a computer mode. I'm gonna press the A button. Or I could just maybe be watching an entire intro that I have to watch, right? But obviously it's playing some kind of scenario out here. Indeed, those, oh, well, it's in, it's in language. It's one of these games. It's in the, the language of, of, it's, it's, it's Deutschland here. Okay. I don't speak German. I'm sorry. I think that's funny. Especially Indiana Jones's career with Germans of the old ways, of the old era, right? And this is a, this is a German version of the game. Anyway, so he's talking and I'm still not doing anything. I'm just watching. Look, Lucasfilm games are more about telling that story, right? I'm assuming this is a point and click game. Yes. Oh my gosh. Is this copy protection? Okay, so we see the floating cursor. So I'm in mouse mode. So if I use the D-pad, so I'm down here with the D-pad, right? So that should, yeah. So it treats it like a mouse. And we can come down here and I'm gonna assume A is left mouse button. Sure enough, get a little beep. Yeah, okay, so this is some kind of copy protection system, which, considering it's also in a language I cannot read, write, or speak, or understand, right? Yeah, this is going to be the end of this. So what I'm going to do is, we got to see that fun little game experience there on the CDTV. You saw the load times, you saw how long it took. I mean, I did do some editing there, but I probably only edited out maybe 20 seconds of load time, if you're keeping track. Let's go ahead and try another disc. I burned three CDs. I'm really hoping one of these is... Uh, in good old English, okay? So let's try that next. So by the way, what happens when you just press eject and you're in the middle of a game? Well, it reboots the Amiga with a, a common looking kickstart screen. Isn't that neat? And then it comes right back to that. Well, here we go. I've popped in what is a multimedia, I'm, I'm thinking is an actual multimedia experience. In the... Whoa, advanced military systems. Yes, yes indeed it is. <laughs> Let's turn that down. That jam and music, I'm sure that's royalty free as well. So once again, I'm still in mouse mode. So clicking the A button, nothing's, ha oh, I click the B button. And there's, there's all the information if you're concerned with that, what, where these amazing photos and informations have come from. So now I'm back in joystick mode, just in case that's what I'm supposed to be in but I don't see anything here. Now there are some interesting buttons on here, by the way, like Genlock and CDTV. So if you press Genlock while you're doing something, nothing happens. What about CDTV? Nothing happens. I should probably look up what those actually do, huh? Editor Q here again, and I got a conversation going with Chris Edwards, and once again, he's helped me out. He's basically saying that, yeah, those buttons there on there, it's a, a switch that lets you swap the pass-through from TV signal or the CD TV signal to the primary display. So that's what that switches, or that's what those buttons are for. Well, that's pretty slick. All right, I'll press A. Hey, look at that, go into menu. So yeah, I'm wondering if when you turn this into an actual Amiga 500 with the, with the CD drive, if that's what those buttons are for, because I know once you get all that going, you've, you've not only got an Amiga 500 with a CD drive, you've got, yeah, of course it's an Amiga, so it can do Genlock, but also this is the only Amiga product to ever include MIDI. So there's, as you, as you saw earlier, when I showed you the jack pack, it has MIDI ports in and out. Something that really, we really wanted Amigas to have from day one, all of them, but they just couldn't get it in there. And that kind of helped Mac slip into the music world, helped Atari more so slip into the early eighties. And, um, you know, actually the whole decade of the eighties was kind of dominated by Atari and MIDI. 
But yeah, the CD TV does have MIDI jacks in the back. So once again, if you turn it into a computer, not only do you have a CD player, you could stick in your rack, but it could be your MIDI device controller. Advanced military systems. Well, missiles are really popular nowadays as are tanks and planes. Let's check out that. Click A. And this, this is a classic 80s, 90s, early 90s actually, multimedia experience. You do get some audio as you heard. Look at this, this is an Iraqi Alabas and Al Hussein RBM. So we'll click on that and get all the amazing information. They're probably still using these, I bet. Ooh, ominous music. Very ominous. In the Persian Gulf War. But while these modified Soviet Scud B surface to surface missiles produced a certain amount of terror in their target cities, the Al Abbas and Al Hussein had little military impact on the war itself. So, as you can see, uh, before Google and the internet, this is what we did, right? We popped in a multimedia CD, maybe it was Encarta, Encyclopedia, or something like this. If you were a military, you know, hardware junkie, uh, this is a, a disc you could put in there, sit back, relax, and you're a lazy boy, and click through the menus on your amazing new Commodore CD TV that you took home and plugged in and, and did cool, fun things with. This is, this is, this is what you did, I guess. It's, I mean, it's one of these things, guys, that... I know a lot of people will get this and they immediately kit it out to be, you know, the Super Amiga 500 CD system. The keyboard, the mouse, the floppy. They open it up, they put in RGB to HDMI, they put hard drives in it, they put RAM expansions in it. But this, much like my Amiga 1000, my Amiga 500 mostly, and my CD32, I'm just, I'm just leaving alone. I mean, this, I want to keep it stock. I want to keep it as it is because this, whether Commodore was right or not, okay, this is what it was intended for. You were supposed to buy it, take it home, have something you could play your CDs on, and then also do this multimedia experience. And then, yeah, there were games you could play that if you had no idea, if you're only, uh, if you walked into Sears or JCPenney or wherever these might have been sold or service merchandise, and you saw this sitting there, you'd say, oh, Commodore, yeah, I had one of those. I had the 64. I remember that. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, so they got CDs. Oh, it's oh, it's got the new multimedia graphics. And, oh, these games look good. Like, maybe because they just weren't into the scene, these, this particular audience, this demographic, they didn't keep up with Commodore. They didn't follow from C64 to Amiga. They moved on or just got out of it. And now maybe this was their first exposure to even Amiga games, right? They'd grab a couple titles that were on sale or maybe part of a pack-in promotion, pop in, you know, Indiana Jones, the English version, and play it and be like, hey, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, maybe it would give them uh, that, that hook into Commodore again and that they offer other products. And like, oh yeah, this was based on something called the Amiga. I know it's silly to say all this today in hindsight, right? We all know the, the history of this. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like a screensaver mode. Look at that. It's going into its own little audio vi visual sideshow. Yeah, F-18s, man. Keep in mind, back in 1991, the F-18, this was a new deployment. They had just basically replaced the uh, F-14 Tomcats on deployment. So this was this was hot, hot doo-doo back in the day. I mean, they still are, right? I mean, Top Gun Maverick just came out and they use these. But uh, that's fun seeing this stuff. That's a neat little screensaver. So yeah, let me uh, turn that volume down for us. This this is the experience. So even if you walk away from it, if you don't actively engage it, you get this music and slideshow playing in the background and... Hey, you know, you got your buddies over for a poker game, drinking the beer, playing poker, and uh, you got your CD TV on in the background doing this. There you go, Commodore CD TV. Well, Q, man, well, wait, aren't you gonna show us that running Amiga operating system workbench? Where's the keyboard? Where's the mouse? Where's the floppy drive? I don't have any of that stuff. That stuff together combined cost as much as this did by itself, sometimes even more. You know, look, I don't wanna do everything in one video, right? Maybe one day I get access to those devices and I can make another update video of the uh, CD TV with all that stuff on it. I just wanted to share this with you. It's another Amiga in the collection of uh, Hold and Modify here, uh, even though it's in the guise of a 1990 CD player, much kind of like the AGA Amiga 1200 that's hidden away in a you know 90s console, you know, a gaming console with that. So here's your here's your two schools of thought. I'm, Commodore lining up with the, the whole gaming console era, Sega CD, that type of thing. And then you've got them over here earlier doing the multimedia box, Philips CDI and just, or, you know, a CD player plus graphics at the least. Interesting, indeed, for sure. Oh, the BMP, what a classic. I love blowing those things up. Gunship, you blow those up a lot. Uh, I'm done with this video. CD TV, folks. 
It works. Yay.